Yeah, what's good, everybody? We back, episode five, P Paul Pickett podcast. Um, yeah, you know, lots happening since I did my last episode. Uh, Lakers and NBA Finals champs. A um, few things in football. Dak Prescott injury that was kind of gruesome. Um, I'm gonna get into the NBA Finals at first. You know what I'm saying? My takeaway or whatnot. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I feel like the best team won. I really do. I feel like the better team won. Um, the more experienced team definitely. Um, I'm happy for Dwight Howard. Rondo, um, last episode, I think I said Rondo would have been the first player with the Lakers and Celtics championship, but he's actually the second. And um, I think I also said that uh, Iggy, I, I forgot he didn't win the championship last year, went to the finals, though, but he went to back-to-back finals. And so did Danny Green, and Danny Green won back-to-back finals with two different teams, which I don't know if that's been done. I have to look that up look that up and see if anybody's ever done that before. Like actually won, you know, like back to back finals with two different teams, Danny green, LeBron, both got a championship with three, you know, three different um, franchises. Of course, Danny green also got one in college. So, I mean, his career is pretty much cemented. Um, You know, I would think, you know, like, you know, you pretty much, You got a college ring. You got a ring with the Spurs, ring with the Raptors, ring with the Lakers. You could get another one next year or with another team, you know, in a couple years. Who knows? You know, because his contract's only for like two years. Um, Dwight got his first. AD got his first. You know, Markeith Morris. I mean, like, like they said. So, like, yeah, Rich Paul definitely deserves, you know, like two rings because, you know, like three three of the, the starters were clutch sports. <laughs> and then, like, f- three or four of the bench players were clutch sports, you know. Ball Mama, um, Caruso, happy for him, you know. Um, yeah, this is definitely well-deserved. Um a lot of people try to put an asterisk on it, you know. This this idea that you know you can't beat somebody if somebody's you can't beat your opponent unless somebody's watching you beat your opponent. That's bogus, man. You know, like I felt like the bubble, you know, definitely gave it an even playing field, no home court advantage for nobody. You know, made the best man win. You know what I'm saying? And it just clearly shows you that who the best teams were. Overall, you know, people always think just because some team got the best superstars or the best superstar that they're going to be the best team. Nah, man, Miami was definitely the better team in the East, and Lakers were definitely the better team in the West, you know, and whatnot. So, like, yeah, I mean, there ain't much to say, man. I mean... Lakers got the chip. They could be back next year doing it, you know. Everybody talking about they got to make tweaks and stuff because that's how it be. Every year, the LeBron, like, nah, his team ain't good enough. They don't got enough around him. Da, 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 da. And what happens? Finals. Every year except a year he gets hurt. Finals. Every year except a year he gets hurt. You know, I mean – you know, I like to see Michael Jordan get on that first Cavs team that LeBron was on that went to the finals. I like to see him carry that team to the finals. I like to see him win a game against the Spurs that year by himself. You know what I'm saying? Had to single-handedly take out Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, and Tim Duncan. And he might have had Steven Jackson in that squad too, you know. And the Spurs, you know, coaching – from Greg Popovich and all the other role players that they have that always just show up to play. I like to see that. I, I don't think it could be done. You know, I think no matter who it was that was taking that Cavs team, maybe Allen could have did it. You know, he might could have pulled one off. 
You know what I'm saying? And Joe, you're right. Let me take that back. Joe might could have pulled one game off, you know, but like, I still doubt it. You know, it was just so unevenly matched of what LeBron carried to the team. Literally, no team, no defensive player of the year, guys, no six man of the year, none of that. You know, so all you doubters and haters, do the same thing next year. Oh, they don't make tweaks. They, they're not going to win. They don't stand a chance. Clippers are favored. Nuggets are favored. Golden State's coming back next year. They're favored. You know, Brooklyn's going to be favored the first year with Kyrie and Kevin Durant. You know, that's how it's going to be. You know, but um, yeah, congratulations to the Lakers. LeBron, AD, Dwight, Rondo. You know, LeBron, though, baby. Um, when we get in a little bit of NFL, um, the Dak Prescott, man, I actually seen, I was, you know, I'm not a Cowboys fan at all, but I was actually watching some of that game when it, right when that happened, man, it made me think about, you know, when I got in a car wreck and I got hit by a car and my leg just turned to the side, you know what I'm saying? I broke my femur and my leg turned to the side, yo. Like, that's how it was. Like, Dak that car landed on Dak's foot and, and dislocated. Cause I dislocated my shoulder, you know, I broke my foot, broke my femur, you know, and I had to get hit by a car to do that. Like dude landed on his, his um, ankle and, and you could just instantly see how it, it just dislocated in the turn, you know, popped it out of place and whatnot. It just, yeah, it's, I, I hate to see things like that. Cause you know, I know how it is. Like, I got hit by a car, and I still haven't been <laughs> the same since. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we get into the, uh, yeah, like this little, little bit of NFL, um, NFC. That's 4-1. Um, I'm definitely thinking Seahawks got this locked up. Seahawks just look too good this year, man. They should have that division. Um, NSC South, man. I mean, what's Carolina, man? Without Cam, three and two, tied three and two with the top of the division. Saints, three and two. Definitely, there's no telling who's going to win this division. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked who wins it. If Carolina wins it, I wouldn't be shocked. I'd, and I'd be happy. I'm a, you know, I live in North Carolina, you know, so definitely the Panthers win the division. Um, We'll be shocked that the Saints or the Buccaneers win it. You know, that's really that. The whole division's up for grabs. Then you got the uh, the bum division of the 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 NFC, the NFC least, as they call it, Cowboys, Eagles. I mean, like literally, the winner of this division could win the division at like six or seven wins, eight wins at the most. I don't see no more than eight wins winning that division. Um. NFC North, Green Bay, Chicago. Um, I actually was an 85 Bears fan as a kid because, you know, like 85 Bears were like the superstar team of all superstar teams back in 85. I mean, they literally did the Super Bowl shuffle before they even won <laughs> the Super Bowl, you know, did a video celebrating before they won. But, you know, Packers are looking too good. Aaron Rodgers has got too much to prove, I think. You know what I'm saying? When them dress. He's the third stringer, and and Aaron Rodgers is clearly showing that they he ain't gonna be playing anytime soon. Jordan Love ain't, you know, unless Aaron Rodgers decides he just wants out at the end of this year. Uh, we got the AFC East. Uh, Cam's coming back this week at the COVID Buffalo four one. I think Buffalo wins this division. I think New England could. Could definitely probably get in as a wild card, but I've still got Buffalo winning his division. Um, Miami and Jets, I don't even know what's going on. The Jets are already giving up, they're already about to start. Um, uh, who is it? Um, <laughs> Joe Slacko, you know, he was just on the Broncos the year before, and they done got rid of him that quick. I mean, they about to start Joe Slacko, that just shows you where the Jets are. They might as well bring back Vinny Testaverde or or Brett Favre, 
you know, I don't know, but AAC North, North, man, this division boy, this this could probably be the best division in this football right here. You got Pittsburgh at four and zero. You got Cleveland at four and one. Baltimore four and one. And this week you got Cleveland playing Pittsburgh. So we're gonna see definitely which way that division is gonna be going. You know, like I'm, I'm gonna say whoever wins that, whoever loses that game isn't going to win the division and whoever wins has a chance of winning that division against Baltimore. But I'm going to say the loser doesn't win that division at all. That's a, my bold prediction. Um, AAC West, um, everybody's saying the Chiefs, you know, Chiefs lose one game and they say in panic mode, hit the button, you know, nah, I ain't going to say all that. I mean, I think the Las Vegas Raiders are just, better coached and just better than we think. You know, I think John Gruden's just made a lot of good moves, a lot of good trades, a lot of good picks. You know, I mean, they won the game. They only, I mean, it's three or two though. Like Kansas City's still four or one. I mean, they might not lose another game for four or five, six more games. I mean, who's to say they only lose one more this season? You got AFC South. We got Tennessee at four and oh. I would say Tennessee wins that division, hands out. Um, I like the Colts. Their defense is good, but, you know, they all they need is a quarterback. They won quarterback away in Houston Texans. They might as well call it a season. It's done it over with. They're going to be picking for, like, a top five pick. Um, yeah, but uh, even some of these teams that ain't, Doing too well, like Chargers, they got their quarterback for the future. Herbert's definitely balling out. He's just young. Since he's got theirs and Joe Burrows, a lot of these teams got their they quarterbacks locked up. I mean, we'll see after this year what Cleveland and Baker plans are. You know, apparently the Jets are trying to make moves for Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields because, like, the fact that Sam Donald's getting benched, I mean, that tells you a lot. Right there. Dolphins, we still got to see what Tua's doing. You know, but, um, yeah, and I'm I'm, I'm going to say, like, you know, right now, based on what I'm seeing, I got either Seattle or Green Bay coming out of NFC. And I'm going to go with um, Kansas City still in the AFC. Kansas City versus Green Bay or, or Seattle, which I think would be a good high-rating Super Bowl, that especially with the COVID stuff going on, it'd be a good matchup to, to get some eyeballs in there because we already know COVID is going to bring down the numbers, you know, the viewerships and stuff like that. And you know, I don't, I don't know the NFL is taking a hard um, social justice stance like the NBA has. You know, from what I've seen, not it, it doesn't seem as as hard. So. You know, I also know like the NBA's viewership went down somewhat because of, of, you know, people just not, you know, steered away from the social injustice messages and stuff and whatnot. Because some people, they just don't want politics in their sports. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm like, I'm the same kind of person. I really don't politics in my sports, uh, but I'm a big enough, I'm a big enough basketball fan that I'll, I'll still watch, you know, sports, even if it has politics in it, as long as it doesn't get just too much politics, like, like too, too much politics. Because social justice isn't really just politics, but it is political matters because politicians are the ones that have to fix these problems and these issues. You know, like we could have a voice voting and stuff and, and protesting and on social media or whatever it may be on YouTube or TikTok because TikTok definitely has a lot of um, political stuff going on, a lot of Trump um, posts, Biden posts, a lot of social justice posts on TikTok and, and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, these platforms are definitely places that have a voice and whatnot, but a voice doesn't really like, it doesn't really you know, create a solution. Like at the end of the day, like, you know, 
when you have problems, it can't be about excuses. It's got to be about solutions. We, we got to create solutions for whatever the problem is. And I'm a person, you know, I'm a businessman. I'm self-employed. So, you know, I only believe in solutions. I don't accept excuses whatsoever. I will not accept one single excuse that anybody brings to me in life. You know, if, if you bring an excuse to my face, you get ah, poked in the eyeball, get out of here. I don't accept them. I don't accept excuses. I want to hear the solution. Don't bring no excuses to me. Bring solutions, you know, because that's that's how the business world works. You know, like if I have some kind of audio issue or technical issue with this podcast, I ain't got time for excuses. We got time for solutions, you know. But um, yeah, man, it's Triple P, Paul Pickett Podcast. Shouts out to the Lakers. Um, much love and respect to Dak. Get well soon. I hate, you know, I don't wish no injuries on nobody, whether I like your team or not. You know what I'm saying? Like Kobe Bryant was my least favorite basketball player when he was alive, but when he passed away, his death definitely affected me mentally and emotionally. I definitely felt that. I wasn't working hard enough in life that I didn't work hard enough that I ain't accomplished enough yet that I have just a lot to accomplish still because how hard he worked and how much he accomplished and he left so soon. He's only a year older than me and he has so much more to accomplish, so much more to accomplish. So I just know like, yeah, I got to work harder uh, a thousand, not 10 times harder, a hundred times harder, a thousand times harder. You know what I'm saying? So we got the podcast, you know, if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button down there in the, um, the right corner, you know what I'm saying? If you're on um, Instagram or Facebook, you know, follow us on those platforms. If you're on Apple, Amazon Music, Spotify, Deezer, TuneIn, or, or um, iHeartRadio, or any other um, platforms that have our podcast, hit the subscribe button. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, check out the website, promopalace.biz. You know, if you need online market promotions, check out indycastle.net. We do online market promotions on that site as well. Uh, planetplaylist.com. That's our playlist this site where you can submit the playlist. Check out our New Litter Apparel at newlitter.com for dog lovers. T-shirts with um, dogs on it, you know, dog lover based apparel and whatnot. Um, follow us on TikTok, Promo Palace LLC. And we have a, another account that we just uh, purchased called uh, Blue Rabbit. And that's uh, Blue R-A-B-B-I-T-T. That's Blue Rabbit on TikTok. You know, follow us at twitter paul p podcast you can also follow me on twitter at paul w pickett promo palace llc indy castle all that good stuff you know how we do so don't forget to hit that subscribe button in the corner you know what i'm saying i'm your boy the one and only paul pickett otherwise known as paul Masson in the hip-hop world you watch a triple p and i'm out thank you for tuning in